Hey y'all, welcome back for another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. Today we've got not one, not two, but three. We're giving Nosler Ballistic Tip a run for its money. We've got the 308 Winchester loads in 125, let me make sure I get it right, 150 and 165 grains. And here's my test rifle, a Ruger American Gen 1. Yes, I did the custom paint job myself. It's got a 22 inch barrel and I did have it threaded for a suppressor. And of course, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs on here. I've got 308 stamped on the front and a white tail buck on the back. Check out my website, shopmasonleather.com. I'd love to make you one. I'll be taking three shots into ballistics gel from 100 yards. So let's shoot it. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting those 308 Winchester Nosler ballistic tips, the 125s over here, the one, uh, 150s in the middle, and then the 165s right here closest to me. We're going to take a look at the 125s first. So coming in, you can see that wound cavity up front. That's three, one, two, three. The one, there's another one on the bottom sort of underneath these two. These 125s slung this block around as did every other weight. I mean, it was flipping these blocks off the table left and right. So they all delivered that ballistic tip punch that you would think that they would. And we have some fragmentation coming on back. We did capture all three bullets for all three loads. It's a little tough to see them. We've got one right there. It looks like that's just the jacket. At, we'll give that 23 inches. We've got one right there that looks like it held together for the most part. We'll give that 23 and a half inches. And then the third one right here, it's, it's kissing 25. We'll give it 25 inches. And it looks like that third one did hold together for the most part where the other two kind of broke up a bit. So that was the 125s. Moving on to the 150s in these middle row of blocks. A little tougher to see the wound track in this one. There's some bubbles in this block. It doesn't hurt anything, but slung these blocks around really good. And we did capture all three bullets again. It's a little tough to see. This block's a little bit dark, but we have a jacket down in the block right there and the core right there. So we're going to split the difference and give that about 21 inches for those two chunks. We've got the second bullet right here at 23 inches. And it looks like that is just the jacket. The core is gone somewhere. I think it exited the block. I don't know where. And then the third 150 is down here, bulging out the side of the block, right at, what is that, 26 inches. So some really good penetration, actually, out of what's left of these ballistic tip bullets. And then onto the 165s. I think I said 180s earlier. I meant 165. Same story. Nice punch up front. Coming on back, we captured all three bullets. And we've got jacket core separation on two of them there's the core there's the jacket there's the core there's the jacket so penetration wise i mean i guess we'll split the difference between the two this one eh, we'll give it we'll give it 24 inches it's right there and then these two we'll split the difference and give it 25 and a half inches coming on back to the third bullet this one held together the jacket is still inside the core that went to 31 and a half inches so definitely a little bit deeper penetration with the heavier bullets and going back to the wound cavities real quick, back to the 125s, the 125s have the most sort of explosive wound cavity, I'd say. They're definitely the widest. I can make them out pretty good, and they open up extremely rapidly, right about the one-inch mark, they're open. We got some shrapnel effect coming on in here, and then coming on back, the wound cavity tapers off at about the 11 to 11 and a half inch mark, and it slings these blocks around. And here is a side view. There's a little bit of a glare, but I think you can see the wound cavities right there of these 125s. And then looking at the wound cavity of the 165s, again, this block's got some bubbles in it. It's tough to see, but the explosiveness of it starts a little bit further back. Whereas with the 125s, you can see it's way up front where that punch gets delivered. With these 150s, I think I keep mixing up the bullet weights because usually with 308, you got like 150, 165, 180, but now we've got 125, 150, 165. So I'm getting a little confused. 150s right here dang it the the widest point is about right here back at about the four and a half to five inch mark whereas with the 125s it's only about two inches in where that widest point is something to note 
and then the wound tracks on these 165s taper off completely by about right 11 inch mark about the same place as the 125s and then they just keep on penetrating back and then onto the 165s not 180s 165s dang it similar to the 150s a little bit further back their widest point is about right here about the five to six inch mark and then the wound track tapers off here's a side view really about by right here a little bit deeper than the other ones about the 13 to 14 inch mark and it's done and then what's left just keeps penetrating so we're going to go ahead and dig all these bullets out and take a look at what's left of them all right y'all we've got all of these nosler ballistic tip bullets pulled out of the gel Let's take a look at them and go over all the metrics. We got a lot to get through with nine total bullets. The 125s are on top, the 150s are in the middle, and the 165s are that bottom row. Let's hit it. Weight retention. For the 125s, 88, 89, 90 for an average of 89 grains retained weight. That's 71% weight retention for a ballistic tip bullet. I'm pretty darn happy with it. For the 150s, 68, 108, 113 for an average of 96, a little bit more variable. Take a look at the photo. That left bullet there lost all of its core. All that's left is the jacket. Not super surprising with a ballistic tip. I'm not even really going to knock it on that. I, I kind of expect it a little bit. And I forgot if I said it or not. That's 96 grains retained weight for 64% weight retention. For the 165s, 116, 122, 124. So a little bit tighter spread there. For an average of 121 grains retained weight, 73% weight retention. So they're in that, you know, 60 to 75% range there. About what I would expect from non ballistic tips honestly as you go up in weight you're going to have a little bit more mass left at the end of the day on to expansion for the 125s 0.59 inches across the board incredibly consistent and look at the photo here the expansion on those 125s was just incredible super concentric all of them the same nice little mushrooms i really like how these turned out and that works out to 1.9x expansion for the 150s, we saw 0 0.61, 0 0.61, and 0.63 inches, very consistent again. For an average of 0.62 inches expanded diameter, a little bit bigger, that's 2x expansion. And again, very nice, concentric, uniform expansion. For the 165s, 0 0.55, 0 0.59, and 0 0.60 inches for an average of 0.58 inches expanded diameter. That's 1.9x expansion again. So across the board, we're getting pretty much the same thing, regardless of bullet weight. On to velocity for the 125s. For the high, 3,076 feet per second. For the low, 3,058. For an average of 3,067 versus the factory build velocity of 3,100 feet per second. So we only came in 33 feet per second under spec out of the 22 inch barrel of my Ruger American. If you had 24 inches, I'm sure you'd chew up that 33 feet per second. That's pretty darn good. And our estimated impact velocity down at 100 yards would be 2,852 feet per second. For the 150s, our high was 2,856, our low 2,836. For an average of 2,848 versus the factory spec of 2,800 feet per second. So this time we actually came in 48 feet per second faster on average that's always great to see and that works out to an estimated impact velocity down there at 100 yards of 2649 feet per second or thereabouts for the 165s our high was 2765 our low 2707 for an average of 2745 versus the factory spec of again 2800 feet per second interesting because it's a heavier bullet than the 150s with the same velocity spec whatever and here we came in 55 feet per second under that spec number on average so it is what it is far from the worst i've seen i'm pretty happy with it and that works out to an estimated impact velocity at 100 yards of 2553 feet per second on to penetration for the 125s 23 inches, 23 and a half inches, and 25 inches for an average of about 24 inches of penetration. That is incredible for a 125 grain ballistic tip bullet. We had about 29% of the bullet's mass dissipate and create some, you know, nasty wound and stuff up front. The bulk of it penetrated through and went two feet deep. 
I am really pleased with that. For the 150s, we saw 21, 23, and 26 inches for an average of about 23 and a half inches, so very similar to the 125s. Same story there. And for the 165s, we saw 24, 25, and 31 and a half inches for an average of about 27 inches of penetration, went a little bit deeper than the other two. Being the heaviest of the bunch, I would expect that. All in all, I'm extremely pleased with the penetration, especially considering the weight retention and expansion. These things are gonna make a nasty wound up front, but still have enough mass and keep going to go deep enough to most likely give you an exit wound. And on to kinetic energy for the 125s, it works out to 2,610 foot-pounds at the muzzle and about 2,258 down there at 100 yards. For the 150s, 2,701 foot-pounds at the muzzle and 2,336 foot-pounds down there at 100 yards. And for the 165s, 2,760 foot-pounds at the muzzle and 2,387 foot-pounds down there at 100 yards. The 165s hit the hardest of the bunch, but they're all really, really close. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on these Nosler ballistic tips out of the 308. They performed really good. They did ab about as good as I would expect them to. The 125s actually held together and penetrated plenty deep enough for any kind of medium game hunting, as did the 150s and 165s. Something that I forgot to mention back when we were talking about weight retention and expansion and all that is that the 165 fives the jackets and cores did come apart now they still penetrated nice and deep but just know that they did come apart in the gel blocks i'm not holding it against the bullets their ballistic tips i'd kind of expect that for what these are i'm really pleased with how they performed now what would i use them for personally this this isn't my style of bullet um if you like them good on you that would be great if i was going to use any of the three i'd actually use the 125s if i was setting up something for like a zero to 300 yard pronghorn rifle or whitetail rifle you'd get a good flat trajectory that high velocity and with the ballistic tip it'd probably still open up and do a whole lot of damage even out there at 300 plus yards of course way beyond that if you're trying to go way further than that trajectory wise you might actually want to step up to a heavier bullet closer in velocity gives you that flatter trajectory further out it's more of a balancing act between velocity ballistic coefficient yada yada etc nevertheless i'm sure all of these would do really well on most of your medium game if you've used this ammo on anything let us know in the comments how it did for you and here are your boxes, the back of the boxes, for that Nosler ballistic tip, or those Nosler ballistic tip loads, all three in the 308. We got the 125 on the left, the 150 in the middle, and the 165 over on the right. Up top, we've got all your ballistics charts showing your you know, range, velocity, zero distance, energy at those distances, etc. And something that I think is pretty interesting, take a look. For the 125s, of course, those are going to be going faster. 3100 is the, the factory build velocity at the muzzle there. But for the 150s and 165s, our muzzle velocities are listed as the same thing, 2800 feet per second. That's interesting. Just, I don't, that's, that's odd. Um, not sure why the 150s wouldn't be loaded a little faster or the, you know, 165s a little slower. Anyways, make that what you will. And then besides that, down below, we've got just some some bullet points, you know, talking about tight groups, shock, quick clean kills, you know, the same kind of stuff a lot of your ammo makers are putting on there. Um, and then we got some cool little deer graphics down below that. Anyways, there's the back of your boxes. Feel free to stop, pause, and take a look at that if you'd like. And make sure you check out my website, shopmasonleather.com. Everything is handmade by me just for you. Cartridge cuffs, slings, even coffee mugs showing off all your favorite hunting cartridges. Perfect for deer camp. And I bet if you head over right now, there's a great deal waiting for you. I look forward to serving you through my leather work. The link is in the pinned comment or just type shopmasonleather.com into your web browser. And if you want early access to all my videos, become a channel member. The link to join is in the pinned comment. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.